Diodes are two terminal devices, very simple. To summarize them incredibly quickly, they allow current to flow in one direction, but not the other, a one-way valve. So you take silicon, everybody's favorite computing material, and you sprinkle in a little boron. Take some more silicon, sprinkle in a little phosphorus, slap them together, stick in some wires, and you have a diode. A diode is deceptively simple. It doesn't really do much, technically, but it enables so many things to happen. First of all, with just a handful of diodes and nothing else, you can get direct current from alternating current. That is called wave rectification. Also, if you take one more layer and one more wire, you get a transistor. And as you might be aware, transistors are everything. They are what allows us to have all of this fancy stuff. So because of the chemistry and physics of diodes, they have what's called a forward voltage drop, rather than being ohmic devices. Ohm's law? They don't obey Ohm's law. So if you connect voltage to a diode in the forward direction, in the normal intended direction, if you have only a little bit, then pretty much nothing is going to happen. You turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, and there's a critical point, depending on the diode, where all of a sudden it starts working. And then after that, the voltage is passed through. That forward voltage for normal diodes is 0 0.3, 0 0.6 or so volts. Uh, for light emitting diodes, it's closer up into the 2 to 3.5 volt range. If you instead connect the voltage in reverse, it just blocks it. And as you turn the voltage up and voltage up and voltage up, there's a little trickle current going through, but almost none. But at a certain point, all of a sudden, it'll start sending voltage through. This is called the reverse breakdown voltage. And as the name might imply, your diode is breaking. Uh, it starts generating an immense amount of heat and eventually goes <laughs> Now there are a whole host of different diode types for different applications. Uh, the only other one I'm going to mention right now is called the Zener diode. This is a special diode which is actually intended to operate in reverse. If you use it in the forward direction, it operates pretty much as any other regular diode. But if you operate it in reverse, instead of having a reverse breakdown voltage, well it does, it has a reverse breakdown voltage, but it's not breaking, it's a special type that has what's called an avalanche effect that operates correctly at that reverse voltage called the Zener voltage, unsurprisingly. So when you hook up the Zener diode in reverse and you start turning up the voltage, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens until it reaches that point, that specific point for that specific diode, and all of a sudden it's conducting. But here's the magic. If you keep turning the voltage up, to increase the current, the way the diode works is a bunch of trickery that keeps the voltage output from the diode at the same voltage, and it uses the current to do that. So it's used in what are called voltage regulators. So you'll get a Zener diode, and you operate it in reverse, and you put in a voltage higher than the Zener diode is designed for, but the output is going to be what it's designed for. So you might have a varying input voltage, but you're going to get an expected reference voltage out. We'll go into more detail another day. So now let's actually use a diode. Here is the diode in my breadboard. I'm sure it's difficult to see. It is smaller even than a resistor. That is the magic of quantum mechanics. So the first thing I will do is show you the forward direction. I will connect the positive of the power to the positive input side of the diode and the output of the diode to the negative power and I will turn it up to one milliamp and you'll see it goes up to 0.58 volts. So this is roughly our forward voltage drop and if I turn it up a little bit, 0.61, 0.66, 0.67, 0.72, 0 0.75, 0 0.72, you'll see it's not going up much. Once you get over that initial hump of the forward voltage drop, the current goes up and the voltage goes up fairly normally. Uh, the forward voltage drop of the diode does vary as your current varies, but it doesn't vary by much. So you're mostly getting unadulterated voltage out. 
So now I'm going to hook it up in the reverse direction. And since I don't want to break my diode, I'm going to have to do this quickly. So I'm going to once again turn it up to one milliamp. You'll notice it went to 0.5 something volts. Now watch. If I turn it up, is it one, two, three, four? It goes all the way up. So it, what it's trying to do is turn the voltage up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher because it's not getting that one milliamp through. That's how the power supply works. You set a current limit and it turns the voltage up until that current limit is reached or the voltage is reached. So in a forward direction, it reaches it at 0.58 volts or so, 0.5 something, and you're good. But in this direction, it kept turning it up, turning it up, turning it up because the diode was not letting current through. Not enough. That's how you can tell which side is positive and negative. You just have to make sure you're using only a tiny bit of amperage to do your test, or it's not gonna matter because your diode will not work anymore. So now I'm going to demonstrate with an LED as well. So I'm going to connect positive power to a resistor, the resistor into the diode, the diode into the LED, and the LED into the negative power. Now this is going to go up to the full voltage because I have resistors and loads and all that. So one milliamp, and you'll see the LED light up. So the power is going through the resistor, into the diode, into the LED, and out again. Now, if I reverse the diode once again, and this is much more safe because I've got all these resistors, so the chance of it reaching its breakdown voltage is incredibly low. Because the resistor, this is a 10k ohm resistor, so it's dropping a ton of voltage on its own. So we turn it up to one milliamp. So it goes up all the way to five volts and nothing's happening. Just for fun, let's measure our current. So I will just insert this at the LED here. So we'll go from, let's see, we need the positive terminal of the meter. We'll connect it there. I'll connect the negative of the meter here. And we are getting, let me turn it all the way down to microamps. I'm at the lowest setting and I'm getting zero current. But let's go ahead and fix this. Let's wait for the voltage to drop a little bit. And then let's put the diode back in normally. And we will see that now we should get some current. And we do. So all said and told, 0.188 milliamps, so 188 microamps, is flowing through the circuit right now, lighting this LED. So that is how the diode works. As long as you don't overload it, it is a nice one-way valve. So let me do one more quick demonstration of the forward voltage drop. So we already demonstrated if I connect positive power to the diode, and then the diode to the negative power, and turn it to one milliamp, 58.58. So now I'm going to connect to the LED instead. So the LED alone, remember this is a short circuit, but I'm using a current limiting power source. That's why it's fine. So one milliamp, the forward voltage drop of the light emitting diode is 2.65 at one milliamp, roughly. Now let's put them together. So we connect the diode to the LED. We connect the LED to the negative power. And now our one milliamp to light the diode goes all the way to 3.23. So you've got the forward voltage drop of the diode and the forward voltage drop of the LED taken care of. And then it just turns up the voltage until it reaches one milliamp and then it's done. And then of course, if we add in the resistor to dump the rest of the load and eliminate our short circuit, just like we had before, then we can turn it up to the one milliamp and it'll go all the way to five volts. So it reaches five volts and it's not even doing the current limit yet. So it stops turning up the voltage because the resistor is dumping the rest. And that is diodes in a nutshell. Well, simple diodes anyway. There will be many, many videos on diodes and their next evolution, the transistor, because they are, in my opinion, one of the most important topics in all of computing. So until then, be seeing you.